Welcome to Our Life in Books, where we talk about our lives, books, and everything in between. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Samantha. And, and we're cousins! cousins. <laughs> oh, all right. Today we are deep diving into All This Time by Mickey Daughtry and Rachel Lippincott. Yay. I know, I'm excited. <laughs> but first, what tea are we drinking? We are drinking Blueberry Buzz from the Tea Cellar. We love blueberry. This Didn't you rage get this one? <laughs> I did. Yeah, this is one of our favorite teas because I know we tried it in like one of the boxes, one of the tea boxes. And then when I went to the cellar, I was like, well, better get some more. Yeah, we love blueberry. Here. I don't know why, but I just love blueberry. Mm -hmm. Like anytime I see blueberry anything, like pastries, whatever, I'm like, well, I have to, I have to have one. <laughs> I have just to one. at least try it. <laughs> oh, right, what are you reading? I am reading The Burning Shadow by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It is the second book in the Origin series. The first book is, oh my gosh, give me a second, something star. <laughs> the, the darkest star um and the third one is um the brightest the brightest night yeah and okay so we just noticed this i know we're slow but like the brightest night has a different cover i don't I'm and not, we're not happy about it i mean no. until they're all getting a redesign which is fine but i loved the covers yes. Because it looks like someone, like, sprinkled confetti or yeah. something. Yeah, and I don't know. I just feel like we kind of feel like... I putting don't like know. the pe and maybe some people really like it, but I just really so, like these covers. So I used to not like people on covers. I used to hate it. And then I really liked it and I don't know, I feel like now I'm going I'm leaning back towards not liking it. Yeah, I Well, especially if that was the first cover, that I'd be okay with it. Yeah. But it's because I really liked these yes. covers and they are bright and beautiful. Now that I like meh. anyway. So I am reading The Burning Shadow. Um, it's the second book, uh, so I am not going to read the synopsis because I've read the first one. I haven't, I've owned The Burning Shadow, but I haven't read it. And since, um, The Brightest Star came out, or The Brightest, Night, Darkest Star? The Darkest, <sighs> The Darkest Night. Right. No. Brightest Night. The Brightest Night. Oh my sorry, gosh, guys. I'm sorry. Hey, since The Brightest Night just came out <laughs> last month, I wanted to read the whole series, so I started reading them again. So yeah, the end. But um, mm -hmm. if you guys don't know, The Origins is based off the Lux series that Jennifer L. Armitrout wrote. It's about some aliens, and the Origins are a hybrid um, between an alien and a human. And they're like apparently like, the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And so Luca's like pretty dark and troubled, and he, we get to see a little bit of them in the Lux series. And then in the first one, The Darkest Star, you get to like really get to know Evelyn and Luke's past and why she can't remember anything. Mm -hmm. Ugh, so good. Okay, what are you reading? <laughs> so I'm getting ready to start uh, Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Ooh. This, I believe, is her first um, YA contemporary romance. I didn't even know this was coming out. Yeah, I had so no idea. She's, um, she's known for writing the, uh, oh gosh, The Lunar Chronicles. I know, why are we trying to quiz our brains right now? But yeah, I know, I know. The, we have the Lunar Chronicles. Yeah, so she wrote the Lunar Chronicles, and then she also wrote, um, oh, I clicked on it, but my internet's really slow. I'm so sorry. She also okay. wrote that one series, <laughs> Renegades. Oh, yeah, I forgot about mm -hmm. Renegades. Her covers are so bold. Yes, I love them. But uh, Instant Karma is like a totally different book. I will read the synopsis for you. Yay! Chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels is always quick to cast judgment on the lazy, rude, and arrogant residents of her coastal town. Her dreams of karmic justice are fulfilled when after a night out with her friends, she wakes up with the sudden ability to cast instant karma on those around her. Prue giddily makes use of the power, punishing everyone from public vandals to karaoke hecklers. But there's one person on whom her powers consistently backfire. Quint Erickson, her slacker of a lab partner and all-around mortal enemy. Soon, Prue begins to uncover truths about Quint, her peers, and even herself that reveal how thin the line is between virtue and vanity, generosity and greed, love and hate. Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah. Um, so this is a... <laughs> okay, if you scroll down in the comments, people have put, like, instant karma uh, gifts on. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh. oh, those are great. Oh, those are great. I don't like the last one, but. This is a, a Fierce Reads book. Yes. So um, one of the, like, virtual events that I went to, um, Marissa Meyer was talking about it. 
What'd she say? Anything that you remember? Um, I just remember her talking about how, you know, this was a much different process for her because... Oh, I bet. You know, she's been writing, like, sci-fi fantasy. Yeah. And then, Aww. now this. And it's I'm it so sounds sorry. like it was quite a bit of a, like, a nice break for her. Yeah, you know? and she's so cute. Mm -hmm. Ugh. That's so cool. Yeah. You'll have to let us know how it goes. Heck, yes. <laughs> okay, the Kindle Unlimited pick wreck that I picked. Um, I tried to find a little fun, uh, just a romance mm -hmm. for the pick. So I put Roommate by Sarah Saraya Wilson. Um, and it is I keep a, seeing this everywhere. a new adult romance. Ooh. And it came out October 1st. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Madison Hunt Huntington is determined to live her dreams. That means getting out of out from under her family's wealth and influence by saying no to the family business, her allowance, and her home. But on a teacher's salary, the world, real world comes as a rude awakening, especially when she wakes up every morning on a colleague's couch. To get a place of her own... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're going to start again. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm done. There's a reason I took a pen away from you. <laughs> it's my knuckles. My knuckles. They're attached to me. You can't yeah. take them away. I can't pop all of them. I can only do the middle. Okay. Certain all right, get, certain getting distracted. All right. To get a place of her own without cockroaches, mold, or crime scene tape, Madison accepts a position as a roommate. In exchange for free room and board, all she needs to do is keep her busy roommate's penthouse clean and his dog company. So what if she never washed a dish in her life? She can figure it out, right? Madison is pretty confident she can fake it well enough that Tyler Roth will never know the difference. The finance whiz is rich and privileged and navigates the same social circles as her parents. But to him, she's just a teacher in need of an apartment. He's everything Madison's, Madison has run from, but his kind-hearted nature, stomach-fluttering smile, and unexpected insecurities only make her want to get closer. And Tyler is warming to the move. Rewarding job, perfect guy, great future. With everything so right, what could go wrong? Madison is about to find out. Oh, sounds so cute. It sounds so cute, and I really like the um, cover because it has little sticky notes. Mm -hmm. Roommate. I've never heard of a roommate, and I was like... Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, I... Okay, listen, in my 20s, I would have signed up for that job yeah, real fast. Same. Real fast. Real fast. <laughs> I didn't like cleaning, but if I don't have to pay Ro yeah. for my place to live, I'll do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my prime reading pick <gasps> is another Je Jennifer L. Armentrout book. I didn't know it was on there. Yes, it's called The Problem with Forever. Um, it is a YA romance, contemporary romance. Uh, it says, it's a story about friendship, survival, and finding your voice. Growing up, Mallory Dodge learned that the best way to survive was to say, to say nothing. And even though it's been four years since her nightmare ended, she's beginning to worry that the fear that holds her back will last a lifetime. Now, after years of homeschooling, Mallory must face a new milestone, spending her senior year at a public high school. But she never imagined she'd run into Ryder Stark, the friend and protector she hasn't seen since childhood on her very first day. It doesn't take long for Mallory to realize that the connection she shared with Ryder never really faded. Yet it soon becomes apparent that she's not the only one grappling with lingering scars from the past. And as she watches Ryder's life spiral out of control, Mallory must make a choice between staying silent and speaking out for the people she loves, the life she wants, and the truths that need to be shared. So, Heard. Sorry. So I read this. Um, <gasps> oh. I found this book at the library um, for, yeah, like, the in the used bookstore. And I was like, I never heard of this. It was so good. Um, Mallory has trouble communicating because she was, like, abused, and they, like, she, she had to be quiet, and Ryder was, like, her protector. Mm in the abusive home and so she still struggles to like speak up for herself but she realizes that she needs to learn to speak up for herself and become her own um like protector in order to like grow and also to like help writer mm -hmm. um i really liked it it was so good it was so good um so yeah i really think people should read it. i really love the cover it's so cute and they didn't change it it's just like a blue pink orange watercolor yes it's so cute so oh i love that it's on prime reading mm -hmm. all right announcements our next book is shadow frost by coco ma it did i say it right yes okay so um it will be episode 95 and it comes out december 21st day before my birthday so go read it i'm pretty sure this is our first backlist book 
isn't it? This came out, yes, October 1st, 2019. Yeah, so it's a backlist book. <clears throat> I'm um, so it excited. is part of a series. Yes. Uh, the second book, God Storm. Let's see. The publication date for that was October 20th, 2020. Yes. <clears throat> so if you read this and like it, you can go on and read God Storm because it's I'm already guessing out. I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, our next um, pick to watch is a documentary, American Murder, The Family Next Door. It's on Netflix. It's going to be um, episode 92 on November 30th. Yeah, so we'll get to chat about that. Um, I actually like our like watching some documentaries and some like other fun fun shows things yeah in between. i think we should put like youtube videos and stuff like that too oh, just like fun. random things yeah. in between but i, I like really it. like the documentaries because i love documentaries i love crime documentaries um alex watches a lot of documentaries that like i don't care about <laughs> yeah. um like i just feel like he would be the guy that's like super into Ooh. okay this is going to sound bad because actually this does sound interesting. Like the how it's made. I do kind of like those. Yeah. But I feel like he could also watch it all day and I can only watch it so much and then I'm like, yeah. I don't care anymore. I like the crime ones or something I'm interested in. Like yeah. the South Park one. I really was, I'm interested in South Park yeah. so I'm interested in that. Or, um, uh, I watched a couple other documentaries about random stuff. But yeah, mostly crime or if it's something I'm interested in. Right. Oh, okay. So, uh, would you want to learn about Mickey Daughtry and Rachel Lippincott? Yes. Um, did we already say? We already said? Today, we're talking about yes, all this time? Yes, we said Okay, it. we yes. did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so no spoilers yet. We'll give you a warning before yes. we start actually, like, diving into it. Exactly. Um, but we wanted to talk about the authors first. Um, so, this book is co-authored, Mickey Daughtry and Rachel Lippincott. Mickey Daughtry graduated from... Breno University, where she studied theater arts. She's a screenwriter and novelist living in Los Angeles and is one of the authors of Five Feet Apart. Uh, when she's not working, she's watching old black and white movies, listening to Doris Day on repeat, or reading ancient Greek plays. The classics always, she says. Oh, that's so interesting. And Rachel Lippincott is a New York bestselling uh, co-author of Five Feet Apart with uh, Mickey Daughtry. She holds a BA in English writing from the University of Pittsburgh. Originally from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, she currently resides in Pittsburgh with her wife and their dog, Hank. So after I posted a Hank. picture <laughs> of this book of uh, all this time on Instagram, she started following me. <gasps> and then start posting. today it, po it showed she liked one of the pictures that I posted, just like a random picture, not of her book. And I was like, I forgot she followed me. <laughs> ah, he moved. Oh, he moved closer. He's facing me now. Okay, get him away. Do we have anything to scooch him with? Like something long? Oh. What do you want to do? My pen? That pen's not very long. <laughs> your water bottle's longer. But that's thinner. But like move it with the bottom of your water bottle. Like, nah, nah. Oh, I don't want Hold him to on. jump. He's facing so me. Can see what... hit, hit him the other way. Bye, Hank. Or Henry. What was your name again? I don't remember. <laughs> You moved him. Now he's not looking. Oh, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate do it. Bugs. Do it. Do it. You should have had a railing come out of here. He loves <laughs> bugs. Oh, I guess his butts to me. Did yeah. you like poop on my water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was interesting. Okay. I hate bugs. I mean, also same. I'm glad I'm not over there, to be honest. I should have probably done something about it. Sorry. I love it. Okay. Well, do you want to read the synopsis? <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Kyle and Kimberly have been the perfect couple all through high school. But when Kimberly speak, hmm, when Kimberly breaks up with him on the night of their graduation party, Kyle's entire world upends, literally. Their car crashes, and when he wakes, he has a brain injury. Kimberly is dead, and no one in his life could possibly understand. Until Marley... Marley is suffering from her own loss, a loss she thinks was her fault, and when their paths cross, Kyle sees her in all the unspoken things he's feeling. As Kyle and Marley work to heal each other's wounds, their feelings for each other grow stronger, but Kyle can't shake the sense that he's headed for another crashing moment that will blow up his life as soon as he started to put it back together. And he's right. Okay, so here's our spoiler warning. If you haven't read all this time, Please stop and go read it and come back. You can always buy it um, from your local bookstore or online or ask request your, it. yeah, request it at a library. Yeah. So yeah, but go read it. 
but go read it. It's so good. And I then really we can enjoyed it. Discuss. <laughs> discuss things. Okay. So we're going to do the beginning, middle, end so we don't take forever in yeah. talking about it. We have it mapped out, guys. <laughs> We've learned from our mistakes. From our two-hour long <laughs> talks about <laughs> one book. Okay. Okay. So the beginning um, obviously starts from the synopsis says, like there's a car accident um, him and Kimberly get into. <clears throat> um, yeah. So they're at their graduation party. Um, Kyle's like all ready to give Kimberly this gift that he had special made for her. Yeah, charm bracelet. And basically she's breaking up with him. And he storms out all mad. And it's raining and storming outside. And he gets in his car and she insists on getting in with him so they can con continue to talk. And um, so the car has an initial like slide. Hydroplane, yeah. yeah. Has an initial hydroplane. And that was the moment when I was like, oh my God, I know this is not the end of this. Like, right. Because I did the thing like I always do. I did not read the synopsis right beforehand. I know I'd read it like a long time ago, but I wasn't prepared. And as yeah. soon as I saw the hydroplane, I was like, super, this is not going to end well. Right, yeah, yeah. So yes, they get in the car accident. Um, Kyle wakes up in the hospital and to find out he's had a traumatic brain injury. Um, he's got a broken leg. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I think that's it. That's all I think we know. And, and, and then he finds out that Kimberly is dead. Yes. And so he's basically just like blames himself, can't get past it. He's like, you know, I can't, like, this is my fault. I, you know, she had all these plans and I, you know, wasn't prepared to like lose her. Mm -hmm. um, he spends a lot of time in the hospital, um, you know, trying to recover. But then even when he goes home, it's just a lot of recovery time. Yeah, and it's a lot of mental recovery time. Like all the stuff from her is gone. Like her parents came and took it. And so there's nothing in his room that reminds him of her. And he has, he also has a brain injury. So he's having like these flashes of things yes. that aren't real. He's having flashes of her. Yeah. Like she'll be there and she'll be talking to him and then she's gone. Or he like hears her cell phone ring and it's not there. And so she, yeah, he's having a glove issues. His mom's there. Uh, I can't remember her name. I can only remember Mrs. L. Oh, you're right. I don't remember his mom's name. So we're calling her Mrs. L because okay. I couldn't remember it. But yeah, she's there like supporting him. He's like, his room is in the basement and he's just basically like, closed off from the world. Like doesn't want to drive ever again doesn't want to like go anywhere but you know he slowly kind of like gets and he doesn't want to eat but then when he does eat he eats like pizza rolls and garbage food yep i mean i feel that <laughs> um so he finally gets the courage to go visit kim's grave right because he didn't get to go to her funeral because he's in the hospital yeah um, so he goes to her grave and he bring, doesn't he, he brings flowers. Yes, he brings the wrong flowers at first mm -hmm. and he sees the tulips that were her favorite. And he was yellow? Like, yellow tulips? No. No? Something else. Oh. Yellow is Marley. That's right. And it's not tulips, it's rose. <laughs> well. Um, so anyway, he brings flowers or whatnot and when he is sitting there um, trying to figure out what to say to Kimberly, he hears another person, mm -hmm. and he turns around, and there's Marley. She's kind of, like, talking at him, but didn't think that he would hear her. Right. It sounds like she's, like, narrating something. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, what'd you say? She's like, oh, I didn't think you would hear me mm -hmm. and listen to me. And so um, they start off as, like, acquaintances. Yeah. And he's, he thinks that, you know, he can't talk to anybody else, and he doesn't deserve to basically move on because, oh, hold on. Eyelash. Continue. Um, who did, did Marley remind you of anyone at first? Like when, when she was first introduced and like, um, no, who does it remind you of? Luna Lovegood. <gasps> yes, Luna Lovegood. Because she's Love just Good. so, it just sounds like she's so like, um, like a old soul. Yes. And she's just like had so much, but she also like. Every time she was talking in the book, I heard her voice as Luna's voice from the uh, movies. Oh, like really? that soft. Yeah. Yeah. I she, definitely could say that, where she's, like, she's more, like, because it's, like, she, you know, she... Like, thoughtful. Right, and she she wants to be heard, but at the same time, she doesn't want to talk too loud. That's, yeah. like, the feeling I get from her. But oh, anyway, definitely. so the second she showed up, I'm like, is that Luna Lovegood? Is this, is this who this is? <laughs> yeah, so slowly, they start a friendship because um, she says no sad stories, and... 
and she's visiting her sister's grave, mm-hmm. and so like they kind of just Kyle doesn't really know much about it at first. No, she he just knows it's that, a, her sis, her twin sister. Yeah, and that they're both visiting Brit graves, and that's how they both kind of like understand each other's mm-hmm. because they're both like dealing with loss, right. and they both agree too that it's just gonna stay a friendship because neither one of them is like ready. For ready, anything yeah. Else. So, um, as obviously their friendship grows, like things, you know, happen, um, she, he invites her over to hang out, kind of goes wrong the first time because his mom shows up, but then it happens again mm-hmm. and they like... Well, he's like allowing himself to be happy. Yes. He's finally accepting that like, he gets to move on. Like he's only 18 he gets to move on with his life. Yeah, after Kim. exactly. So he, so you know, they start a friendship. They start more than a friendship. Um, he oh. tries to explain it to his friend Sam. Yes, I was going to say we haven't talked about Sam. Yeah. Yet. So his friend Sam, you know, also lost his best friend, and so he's also dealing with it. Plus, the, like dealing the three with three of Kyle. them used to be best friends. Yeah. Kim, Sam, and Kyle. So he's like dealing with the loss of Kimberly as well, and also like, you know, it comes out that. Um. Sam had a crush on Kim. Yeah, yeah. Sam was basically in love with Kim. Um, and Kyle just kind of didn't notice because when he, Kyle hurt, hurt his um, arm and was and his football career got ended before the accident. So he like kind of just like sunk into himself and stopped really like caring about uh, mm-hmm. looking around other people and just like kind of being a little selfish. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he um, didn't notice until just then that that Sam lost Kim as well and lost any part, you know, that he wanted, any future that maybe he thought he could have, it was gone. Right. So Kim, so as Sam's, like, as Kyle's signing some sort of happiness with Marley, Sam's, like, kind of getting mad at him for moving on because Kimberly can't move mm-hmm. on. Right. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> we just like, all right. So <laughs> now we're in the middle, <laughs> and he's, like, happy. Yeah, yeah, he's, they're, he's, they're re- happy. Yeah, he's recovered mostly. He mm-hmm. still has a little bit of brain issues, but like he's, f- she's helped him like move on. She's helped him find another job, like yeah, a job. Yeah, he gets career. a writing job, and she he gets he, to write about sports yeah. instead of playing them. So she gets to start teaching a small writing class, mm-hmm. and then get a dog, a little Yorkie. Oh yes, they get a. Hoppy. Yeah, and they're just like happy. Like he's not trying to like be who he was, and she's starting to come out of her shell, and they're just like happy. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then the, the twist. Well, yeah, then they're together in his basement, yep. and there's a storm, and suddenly she's gone. And it's the it's the year anniversary of the yeah. accident. Yes, it's been a year. Yep. And she kind of says something like, "I knew this was." gonna end soon or something Mm -hmm. like that um so yeah so it's a storm in the middle of the night and he wakes up and she's gone so he thinks that she's run off again like she did when his mom came around so he goes off running into the night to try and find her and he falls again and like it's having a lot of issues yes and then wakes up in the hospital (laughs) And you're like, what is happening? And he's obviously confused. He keeps asking where Marley is. And mm-hmm. he's like, I don't understand. Where's Marley? She ran into the night. Is she okay? Like, you know, he thought that maybe there was an accident. He wakes up and thinks that there, you know, there was an accident with Marley. Right, because he thought he just passed out. So he's yeah. like, oh, they, they took me to the hospital again. Yeah. Did they find Marley? And so then he gets to come to this awful realization that he's actually been in a coma for eight weeks and his life, his happiness, the things that he just found and we all found, went through with him, Mm -hmm. wasn't real. Yeah. None of it actually happened. Kim is still alive. She's fine. Yeah, she 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 broke her arm. He's the one who got hurt worse. Um, And there's no Marley. You know, Marley isn't a thing. His life, the happiness, him writing, none of it was real. Right. His family and his friends are all very insistent, like, you have to get over this. Marley was never real. Yeah, you have. So basically, like, he has to to mourn another life. He just got done mourning a life. And now he has to mourn another life that he thought he had. So it was uh-huh. so hard. So he wakes up, and he is insistent that Marley is real. He's like, people, everyone around him is telling him it's not real. The sounds and the smells mm-hmm. are from, and some of it is true. The sounds and the smells are from 
the real world. So every time he would like have a vision of Kim, it was actually the yeah. real world. Because like one of the visions was um, she had this very specific blanket, and did she she had that blanket? Yes. So he was. They think like he was like opening his eyes and kind of being aware of his. He's like, and his brain was like taking in so all yeah. the information about Sam being in love with Kim. Like Sam told yes. him, that's how he knew. But in his subconscious, like that's how his subconscious, like just kind of wove dealt it with into it. the story. Yeah, because I mean, I do the like we kind of. I mean, I assume everyone does that too. Like, if you're sleeping and there's people around you talking, because I remember this happening a lot when I was a kid. Whatever people were talking about was part of my dream. Yeah, I my do. My brain this, just incorporated yeah. it. I do the thing now where if my alarm goes off or something goes off in yes. real life, uh, my brain incorporates it into my dream. And so I like, I don't hear an alarm or I don't do something I, because. Yes, I don't recognize my alarm. I just hit snooze because somehow it's part of my dream and the snooze needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, like it's an alarm going off at a factory or something like that. So anyway, so he keeps looking for Marley. He's obsessed and then. It starts raining one day, or there's sprinklers, I can't remember which, mm -hmm. and he looks outside and there's a girl with a black hood picking up snails off of the sidewalk. And he's right. like, wait a second. Which is something that Marley did. Yeah, and he was like, this is so strange, but also so cute. And then he's like, she's real. So he tries to, he like finally like gets her, gets like sees her and sees that she's real and she keeps running away from him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's going on, okay? And then he's like, okay, well, dream Marley is what he's calling her. Like she took a while to like get to know yeah. me. So maybe I need to like figure it out. So he like tries to enlist the help of Sam and that kind of doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so then he enlists the help of Kimberly and he says like, you know, you know me better than anybody and we're, we're best friends still too. Right. Like help me. Mm -hmm. um, so he finally like, gets through to her uh, by... Doesn't Kim talk to her mom? I mean, I know her mom is involved because... Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, Marley's mom is his nurse, and she comes with her on to the hospital during her um, shifts because she's quiet, she just reads and hangs out by herself, so she's allowed to stay mm -hmm. there. Um, so basically, I think he writes her something, and he says, like, uh, that... Yeah, I can't remember exactly what he says. I can't. Sorry, I'm, I'm dry. I'm like, oh, he, I'm dry. Because he tells her, like, you know, uh, come talk to me if you want, otherwise I'll leave you be. Like, yeah, and he's like, basically says to her that you helped me. Like, your writing helped me, like, become who I am. And he's like, I understand that, like, that wasn't real. Like, the, the stories weren't real. But he's like, I'm still, like, I still want to be with you and I want to be in your life. Like, talk to me. Right, because that's what he finds out. He finds her notebook. Mm -hmm. um, and all the things that he remembers from that life at least from her like from obviously from her his friends like his yeah. brain made up but all the things about her about the things like those were the her. things they did together yeah the story she was creating making up and telling him as he was in his coma she yeah. would sneak into his room and that's why he smelled what she smelled like and knew like that she was real because mm -hmm. he just felt it so like finally she like kind of opens up and they like talk and they're gonna they start kind of slowly building back this relationship mm -hmm. and he gets her the same dog that she had yes. talked about wanting and Kimberly helps surprise her with it and it's just great and it's all from his hospital bed and then when her and Georgie George or Georgie I can't remember I don't remember either sorry uh Georgie the puppy and her mom are out of the park well, um, we find out what happened to our twin sister. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, what would happen to is we find out, sorry, back a ways, is that um, her twin sister always wore pink and she always wore yellow. Mm -hmm. And they were they were switching roles when they were, like, 14 because... Because didn't they do that, like, quite often? They yeah. They would switch places. But and... Marley would do it... Mar uh, Laura would do it because Marley was shy and Laura wasn't. And Laura mm -hmm. wanted to, like, stand act like Marley and stand up for herself so she'd stop being bullied. And... One of the, uh, and Marley's necklace got caught in Laura's hair, and Laura went to rip it out, and it flung into the street, and then Laura went after it, mm -hmm. and Marley froze. And Laura got hit by a car, and Marley did nothing to stop it, so she's had all this and guilt. Nothing to stop it. You were right. 14 years right. old. Like, but that's in her head. She did nothing, so she's been blaming herself this whole time for her sister's death. Yes, and so... Marley or Georgie almost runs in the road and she's like, oh my gosh, we're Georgia in the rug. And then Kyle can see a kid in the road mm -hmm. and he sees Marley's face and then the phone drops and she runs, obviously, yes. to get to save the kid. 
So um, then it cuts to her in the hospital, and she's the one that's not waking up now. Mm -hmm. And he thinks, you know, now... Well, like, and, yeah, the doctor, I mean, the doctor basically tells him, like, she's not coming back, so say your goodbyes. Yeah. And he's like, no, this, well, he, what, she, what she says is, like, basically, um, they don't know why she's not waking up. Like, there's not fit, nothing physically wrong, but she hit her head and all, like, just like him, who knows when she's going to come back. So he's right. like, okay, it's my job to bring her out because I, she brought me out. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't understand this part, but I was reading pretty fast. So then she, he, like, starts talking to her, goes in, they somehow, like, get back to their place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like... So, from his perspective, she is talking with her sister. Yes. And seems like she does not want to be on Earth anymore. She wants to go be with her sister. Yeah, because it's, like, dark and, like, in the, in the world, like, like, they're, like, he's building, like, it's not their world. Like, mm -hmm. this world is, like, dark and gloomy. And he's like, no, this isn't our world. Like, the world that we created is this. And he, like, tries to, like, sh like tell her how it is. And she's just, like, then Laura shows up and mm -hmm. she's, like... She's like, I'm sorry, like, I have to go with her. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of think, oh, okay, well, and he, he's like, she's not coming back. And he kind of, like, starts freaking out. And then the doctor says, wait, and her pulse comes back, and mm -hmm. she wakes up. And she says she had to say goodbye to Laura. Ugh. And that's it? And then that's it. <sighs> and then we hope happily ever after, like she wanted. It's a roller coaster at the end. <laughs> roller coaster. Roller coaster. Okay, so we've got some questions, like always. Why can't I scroll? There we go. Oh, God, it's scrolling a lot. <laughs> no, why can't I scroll? Too much, too much scrolling. Okay, do you want right. to start it off? Sure. Favorite character? Sorry, my Do you want me to answer my question first uh, as well? Um, Who's your favorite character? Uh, Marley. Who's okay. yours? I said Kyle's mom. Oh, yeah. I really like Kyle's Mrs. mom. Mrs. L. I yes. do like her a lot. I think she was super supportive throughout the story. Yes. Um, and she's what I want all YA parents to be. Like, usually in YA books, the parents are either non-existent or they're awful. Yeah. And I think she was just so supportive throughout. Like, even when, um, you know, Kyle's trying to insist that Marley was real, his mom's trying to be as supportive as possible while trying to keep him mentally okay yeah you know um so i just i really liked yeah. his mom <laughs> um i like just i like marley's character um i i really I, liked her too yeah i just feel like she's so like not relatable kind of relatable but also like you feel like you just want to be friends with her yeah um and yeah i just i just liked her as a person okay least favorite character you have to answer did you answer the same person oh my god good i said sam me too um i said you know he honestly wasn't that bad but those two boys need to work on their communication skills. Yes. Uh, to be fair, I don't think Kyle was that great of a person. No. But he had a really good arc, like, where he kind of grew and We didn't get to see Sam's, things. yeah. But yeah, Sam didn't really get that. But I don't think he's a bad person. No, we just had to pick a least favorite character. Right. So. But of all the characters, he's my least favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I think, that, like, what hit me the most is, like, when he was, like, like, I need you as a friend right now. And he's like, this is what I'm doing as a friend right now. And he lets him, like, he he knows Kyle's going to go. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go with you. Instead of being like, you know what? I know you're wrong, but I'm going to go there with you. And so mm -hmm. at the, when he does come back and says, I'm stupid, I should have gone with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like he's, like, doesn't open up to Sam or to Kyle a lot about Kim. Yeah. Kyle keeps pushing. He's like, stop pushing. He's like, but, like, I'm trying to get you to open up to me. But I think Sam's arc will probably happen later. But yeah, least favorite. Sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Hypothesis on the title and how it pertains to the book. Okay. I have no idea. So this is my guess. I'm guessing you're probably right. Um, I think it's still, I think it means that you still have all this time left. So don't waste it. Yeah. That's basically what yeah? I said. Yeah. Yay. I said, you I know, I think it. it has to do with like all the time that gets lost. Oh, and yeah. And then the time, you know, how we need to make more of the time that we have. Yes. I agree. Like, you know, don't take life for granted. I know it's hard. We all get stuck in our like social media and work and friends and love life mm -hmm. and drama and right. I think it's just I think it's nice to just take a step back and just realize that like we have you know all the time we have left favorite part oh wait I added questions and up at the top you said you didn't yeah remember we added questions right at here. the bottom nope um 
What do you think of the book's cover? How well does it convey what the I book is really about? I up there, you hoe. If the book has been published with different covers, which one do you like best? Uh, I don't know. You go first because okay. I don't know. I'm, I just, sorry, I missed this one. Um, I wanted to look up the cover on Goodreads so we could talk about it. Sorry, but I, I, got do... the, I got the ones at the bottom, but I did not <sighs> see that part. I really like this cover. I love the flowery yes. and the hourglass. So I, I, I would say I'm drawn to this cover. That's really perfect. Um, and I love how the top, too, like the top is, I assume, Kim and Marley holding hands. And then it's like the time is running out. And then it's them like separate. Oh yeah, I never thought about that. I also like how it's an hourglass. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Um, but I guess I didn't look to see if there's other versions. And I like the flowers because flowers was like obviously a big mm -hmm. theme in this book. Marley goes through the book and like every flower, like everyone knows, every flower has like a um, what's it called? A yeah, meaning. Uh, yeah, because. They, people used to communicate through flowers. Yes, yeah, so I think that's really sweet. There are no other covers. No, so I love I love the cover. I'm mm -hmm. glad that they went with it. I kind of wonder like what the theme is behind it. Obviously, but I I think we've understand it. Like yeah, at the top is him and Kim, and the bottom mm -hmm. is him and Marley. Well, I thought the top was him and Marley in his dream. <gasps> and oh, the time that's, is sorry. Right that's now. what I meant. That's definitely what I meant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Oh, Sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> now you can do your next one. Can I? Which one am I on? Oh, five. five? Okay. Yeah. All right. What was your favorite part? Um, I think my favorite part was just like Kyle's healing journey with Marley. Um, yeah. All the you know all the cute little things they do together when they're first like a couple. They go and feed the ducks and, and they like go on the winter festival. Yeah, I just yeah. really liked that that little like recovery montage. You know, of just. He's getting better and like well, and it's life like is happy, up like up. it's first love, it's love at the beginning. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I put when Marley and Kyle got Georgia, mm. both times. Georgia, Ge Georgia, Georgie, Georgie. Georgie. Uh, I put it's Georgia, Georgie. I just mistyped it. Both times, I just thought both times were really cute, and I, mm -hmm. I, I like puppies. So, <laughs> uh, least favorite part. Um. I think it was hard, um, but I would say that when when we think Marley is choosing Laura, that's when I bawled. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, that part was really hard, but I think yeah. um, the first twist is the one that got me the most when Kyle wakes up from the coma. Because I was just oh. like, like, I read it, and I was like, no! Yeah, I Even did, though, yeah. like, I saw, because it was almost halfway through the book, maybe a little bit more, but I remember looking down and being like, okay, like, his life is happy, like, what's gonna happen? Oh. Because the rest of the book can't just be about his happy little life. How dare they? And then I read that, and I was just like, no! <laughs> no. I did, yeah, that that did my make my heart sink. Uh -huh. But I would say I bawled, because I genuinely could mm -hmm. understand why she'd want to choose to be with Marla, yes. like Laura. Yes. So I started crying then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that part. Sucks well, too. from the time like when she like well like got hit to like that, yeah, yeah. it was just like bawling. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, uh, describe this book in three words. I said heartbreaking, pain, and hope. Heartbreaking, surprising, roller coaster. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. All right, favorite quote. Can I say the S H I T word? No. Okay, I'll say crap. Okay, so I actually took, a, I didn't really highlight a lot in this because I was so into it. I um, only had a couple. But this is the, I guess this is another part where I cried. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, it's your, uh, um, so it's when he's like, Kimberly finds out about Kyle's other life. And he's like, Sam told me about your other life. The words cut me like daggers. I try to contain it to keep my crap together, but the tears come spilling out no matter how hard I fight them. So it's like when he, when someone finally understands, like Kimberly like, is his, still his friend and understands that like he just lost the love of his life mm -hmm. because she's not real. Like right. that just made me cry. And that's ugh. why. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Yes. Go ahead. Um, okay. This is also the quote that I put on my blog post mm. for this book. Even if I could picture it, there's no way I can move forward now, haunted by the ghost of my girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend, I correct myself. And somehow it makes it worse. Like I don't have claim to the grief inside me, just the blame. Oh, that's so Ugh. good. Ugh. Because that first part where he's, you know, trying to get over everything and move on with his life is just so painful. It's so painful. 
Because, like, you know, I can't imagine that. Like, breaking up, but no one else knows that you're broken up. And so you haven't even had time to process the breakup. And then she's dead. Yeah. And so you don't feel like you get to have that grief. Yeah, exactly. You feel selfish. And then you feel to blame for her death because you were the one driving the car. Yeah, even though it wasn't your fault. No. But, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. What feelings did this book invoke? I said so much sadness. My <laughs> God, I cried so much. <laughs> I said sorrow. I felt like I kept waiting for bad things to happen again and again. Mm-hmm. Because at the beginning, like, it starts with bad, and so you can't... I felt like even when him and Marley were happy, you're right. Like, I was like, okay, like, what next bad thing is going to happen? Because all these bad things are happening. Yes. <sighs> all right. What parts made you cry the most? Um, I said when he woke up and he thought he, the, lo um, the life he loved was a lie, and then when, obviously, like, when Marley... Same thought. I said, we thought he cho was chosen Laura. When Kyle woke up from his coma, and then... The roller coaster of an ending, all in caps. I, I know. It was just like, ah. <laughs> um, it's my turn. Sorry. Me? Is it my turn? I don't remember. I don't know. I'm just getting into this. Sorry. You go. There were quite a few twists. Did you see any of them coming? Okay. So I knew that Marley was going to be a real person. You son of a bee. Okay. Um, I was. I just didn't know how it was going to play out. Like I thought maybe she was going to be like a. Um, like a volunteer at the hospital or something. Ooh, okay. Um, but I honestly didn't see the coma thing coming. Like, no. there's a lot of people on Goodreads that said they saw that coming, and I did not. Like, I should have, because like I said, I was looking at the percentage oh, of the book see, I had yeah. left, and I was like, what is yeah. the rest of this book going to be? But I didn't see it coming. Um, and I honestly, I thought this was going to be a magical realism book where he kept seeing Kimberly, and it kept hinting at the fact that, like, He's like, yes, I have a brain injury, but would that really make me see her so much? And so I was like, oh, this is going to be magical realism. Like, it is her ghost coming back, and she's going to tell him it's okay to move on. And oh. like, so I thought for sure it was going to be magical realism, and it was not. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. I love because I had a different experience. So for the first part of the book, I thought Marley was dead. <laughs> I thought she mm. was a ghost because she kept being only in yeah. the graveyard. Well, and then she ran away. I feel like I had that thought too. Okay, good because I mean because she ran away when his mom came home. But then yes. obviously at the Winter Festival, Sam saw her, and I was like, "Okay, that's a, you're yeah, wrong, Samantha." Yeah, yeah. Then when Kyle woke up, I thought Marley was also in a coma because you've read like those things where yeah. people in comas can talk to each other. So I was like, "Okay, she's in a coma too," and like he's gonna go find. So the coma thing, I kind of guessed a little bit that there have to be like something like that, but I thought she was also in a coma, mm -hmm. and that's why she kept saying, "Now he's gonna have his life, and I'm not gonna have mine anymore, and I was never gonna be happy because she's in yeah. a coma, and they were talking to each other in a coma." She but said that something else. was wrong. <laughs> but I never actually saw any of the actual twist that happened come. Like when she left with Laura, I thought she was left with Laura because yeah. because I ha we haven't read the other book spoilers, no. so I thought it was gonna be like. A really sad ending. Yeah, so did I. Do that. I mean, yeah. so did I. I, I. But yeah, I thought Wiley was dead. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Okay. Your turn? What are your thoughts on how the book ended? Um, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I liked it. Although I felt the whole ending was just rushed. <laughs> I said I hated it. <laughs> no, you did. I thought it was so unnecessary. Like oh the last part. Have Which they part? not been through enough trauma? Which Why? Part do you, say? you have to ex you have to explain. The whole like her she got in an accident and then oh my god she's almost dead and then guess what she's not dead like it's just too much. <laughs> I think they wanted to because she was never gonna have closure like he had. Yeah. They wanted her. I just I don't know. I felt like like if they're gonna have the trauma of her being in an accident and like Kyle having to go through this loss again again then make her dead <laughs> don't make her dead and then bring her back to life like yeah. i just it was one of those endings where i just wanted to throw the book because i was like it's too much it's too much i thought if it wasn't so rushed it wouldn't have been as much to me but yeah. i felt like it was just rushed it was like okay this is happening this like there was no like time in between like the first part you got so much time mm -hmm. and yeah. you didn't get any more time so i i really liked the first twist i liked that yeah i did um, too and i liked you know finding out that marley was real and all of that i just thought that ending with her getting in an accident it was like Hasn't Kyle been through enough? Yeah, like, and then, and then keep waking up again. Like it was just a lot. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, da, 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 da. If you could hear the same story from another person's point of view, who would you choose? I think Kim. Kim? Mm -hmm. I like that. Because, you know, we got to see Kyle when he thought Kim was dead, but what about Kimberly when she thought Kyle was in a coma? Oh, yeah, and she and probably was super guilty for, like, breaking up with him. <laughs> right, because that was the thing. Like, she, once he woke up, she's like, oh, I didn't meet. Like, we get, we can be together now. Like, I didn't mean it. And he was just like, no, I've actually gotten over it already. And so it'd be interesting to see from her perspective, like, how she dealt with that. Well, and also she's probably still, like, I think her and Sam have feelings, so she's probably, like, by, like she's probably the same thing, like, what Kyle is going through with Marley and Kim. Like, mm -hmm. she was going through that with Sam and Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I put, I want to hear Marley's point of view, because I think it'd be really interesting to, like, see her arc. Yeah. Like, talking to him and, like, what she wrote and, like, maybe she was getting stuff back. Maybe, maybe like, because they were holding hands and, like, he felt it. Maybe they did, like, hold hands. Maybe yeah. Maybe there was some sort of communication between her. And I'd like to see, like, what she did outside of the room and outside of the hospital. And just I think see it'd her be life. cool to see her story, too, from, like, the time her sister died yeah. to meeting Kyle. Yes, I agree. Uh... Do, did this book seem realistic? Up until Marley's crash, yes. <laughs> Same. Like, I just... It was too much! Yeah. Uh, After that, I was like, this isn't realistic. <laughs> right. Have you read Five Feet Apart also by these authors? I have not. We actually kind of no, already talked about yeah. this. <laughs> I said, but I want to, and then watch the movie because Cole Sprouse! Yes! Cole Sprouse! So we need to. You know, we talked about next year, guys, doing, like, instead of, like, we do do uh, the book. Do do. Do do, <laughs> children. Um, the deep, book deep dives. We thought we should do like a book to movie yeah. comparison next year. Instead. I think it'd be fun. But having read this book now and that ridiculous ending, like I'm terrified to read another book by these authors. I'm excited. Like, what are they going to do it. to me? I like crying. <laughs> no, I'm just. I do not, especially because I read at work a lot now, like on my lunch breaks. Yeah. So I'm like, I cannot sit in my office and read and then open my door when my break's over with tears in my eyes and everyone's like, what's wrong? I, I did that. Um, <laughs> I was reading in my car because you told me it was sad and I was close to the end and I was just crying and I came back with like no makeup on. I was like, <laughs> everything's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, ha oh, nope. Books similar to this book to recommend. Okay, I've got a ton. You have a ton? Yeah, what do you have? I found some that I'm not sure that they're, I don't know, they're contemporary YA. List them. Okay. List them, baby. So I have The Weight of a Thousand Feathers by Brian Conigan. Ooh, okay. Um, I also, I read this one, when did I read it? No. <laughs> this says I read it this year. Ugh. Maybe you just true? updated it or something. That, that could be. I don't. Okay. Anyways. Um, it came out in 2019, so I likely read it in 2019. Uh, but it was really good, and it's really sad and heartbreaking. So, you know, similar to this <laughs> yeah. in that respect. Yeah. <laughs> do we do we want to read synopsises? Or? I don't. Ha I just had a list. <gasps> okay. Nope. Then we're good. I didn't <laughs> Sorry. know. I didn't know how we were doing this. Did we do that last time? I don't know. He's making up more work for yeah. me to do. Um, I put all the right places. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to list mine because you have links. I Well, I have three. So. Okay, what's your next one? Instructions for a Secondhand Heart by Tansen Murray. Hmm. Um, it's about a girl who... Or a guy. Shoot. Person. Someone who gets a heart transplant. Oh, yeah. And then kind of, you know, gets to find out whose heart it is. Mm -hmm. So, again, heartbreak. Yeah. Um, All the Right Places uh, is about uh, two teens um, who meet up on a bell tower, both maybe com contemplating suicide and just kind of their journey together. Um, the Fault in Our Stars is another one that's heartbreaking that you haven't read, which you need to. <laughs> Every time I think, oh, I can get through this. No, I can't. Um, about two teens who are recovering from cancer and just oh, kind of God. like how they meet and deal with that at a at a support group. It's crushing. Um, Looking for Alaska by John Green as well is another sad one about kids at a school and just dealing with like, um, I don't know, issues. And I can't, it's been a long time since I've read it, but it's another tear jerker. Um, another one on my list is called Past Perfect Life by Elizabeth Uhlenberg. Um, so it's not 
a direct read alike, but it is interesting and it's about a girl who is um uh, like she she lives with her father who is a widow and she starts applying for colleges and then finds out that she's not who she thinks she is. <gasps> Ooh. Um her her social security number doesn't like pass with the colleges they're like no this is not registered to you what um so she kind of has to find out what happened to her and i just thought it was a it's not a direct read alike but it's uh i just think if you like ya contemporary books that you'll like this one too oh, okay um so i forgot to say the options. i just haven't read a lot of super heartbreaking books i have i like <laughs> to just crush my soul oh um, oh yes okay no uh, the Fault in the Stars is also by John Green, so I was looking for Alaska. Um, if I Stay by Gail Foreman. It's about a girl who is in a car accident with her family, and all of her family dies, and she is... Oh. It, and then she's um, still there in a coma, but she, like, her body's in a coma, but she's able to walk freely, like, her spirit. And so she, like, it's kind so of like... So this is a lot like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But... And she's not, like, she's not in her head. She's, like, outside of it, and she gets to choose if she stays or if she, if oh. she passes on. So it's her decision, because, like, what would you yeah. do? Do you go with the rest of your family, or do you stay? Oh, God. So that one's Ugh. heartbreaking. Um, the next one is Perfect Chemistry. Now, this one's more of a romance, but it's kind of, like, a really sad ending, uh, sad, saddish ending, but it's about these two people who are in chemistry class. Um, one is, a you know, a... a girl who seems privileged the perfect life and another one is a gang member and they kind of like get to know each other and realize that like her perfect life isn't perfect and he isn't a, like a thug you know what mm -hmm. I mean quotes around all that stuff um so yeah this one is pretty sad as well um and the last one is every day by David Leviathan <sighs> this is a sad one it's about a person who wakes up every morning um and their person, the name is A, they're no longer, they're like, they hot bodies. So, yes. They, yes. And so, like, it's basically like them being like. So, it's the same uh, person on the inside, but they look different every yes. day. Yes. Right? And so, like, they never get to have, like, their happy ending. And so, they, um, they meet Justin's girlfriend, Rihanna, R Rihanna, and they want to, A just wants to, like, be close to her and get to know her. And so, like, and, like, A, it's just like this dynamic between them of like they they want to like keep going but if she's with a then she doesn't get to have a life anymore because she'll never be able to be the same person ever you know mm -hmm. and it's just like ugh, it's heartbreaking but it's so good yeah oh i hate crying but it's i mean these books are do so you good. though i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay so our final <sighs> thoughts i did want to ask you Ooh, okay because when I read this, I was, like I said, I was really, really mad at the ending. And I really wanted you to read it, so I had someone to talk to about it. And I could ask, like, you read more YA romance than I do. More romance than I do. Yeah. Um, more books that make you cry than I do. Yep. So, like, is this normal, this kind of ending with, like, the roller coaster? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, the, actually, like, All the Bright Places is a very good example of sometimes the roller coaster doesn't get crashes. Yeah, which again, like I like those endings. It's not You're that sick. <laughs> it's not that I like the sad ending. It's just like I don't know. Like the author said, this is what I'm gonna do to this character, and I'm not holding back. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm not pulling back on the reins and being like, just kidding, they're alive, haha. -ha. You know. Yeah. Like, I I just didn't like that feeling where it was like it just felt like I had my emotions jerked around. Yeah, that happens a lot. That does happen a lot. Um. But well, that's good I, to I, know. I can stay yeah. away from them. <laughs> no, you have to read The Fault in Our Stars. Mm. Yes, you mm. need to. I think everyone needs to read that book. It'll break your freaking heart, and it's so good. Um, but I get why the authors did it, I guess, because she needed, like, she. I, I wish they would have done it in a different way, mm -hmm. um, but they needed her character arc to change and grow as well, and we needed to see that. And I she do like how you explain that. Like, how yeah. she needed to have her closure, her goodbye to her sister. Yeah. I liked it. I, liked I don't know it. if I, mean, I would have done like it in that, that way, I but I like think they needed to have Ex it. Explanation. Explanation. Sorry. <laughs> but no, yeah, I would say, like, all those books I listed, yes, they're all like that. <laughs> <gasps> I've never read I'm so I didn't realize I liked such sad books. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Some I think it's because sometimes you just need to cry. Yeah, I just generally avoid that. 
if I can. <laughs> like, I don't watch things that I know are going to make me cry. Yeah. Like, if I need to cry, I do it, because I'm not very good at, like, doing that any other time. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was, like, is it these authors? Is it this specific It could book be these authors, to, like, because I, I'm guessing Five Feet Apart is going to be like this. Right, because it's about someone with, um... So, Oh my god. I, I know, know I'm blanking I have too. A, uh, a cousin that has this. You do? Mm -hmm. On my dad's side. Oh, I was gonna say. I have a cousin, not you have a cousin. Cystic fibrosis. Yes. I kept wanting to say cerebral palsy, I knew that was wrong. I kept wanting to say C. diff, and I don't. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, cerebral palsy. Or, no. um, cystic fibrosis. You yeah, said it. I did. <laughs> yeah, because cystic fibrosis, you have to be really careful because, like, mm -hmm. if, if you get an infection, like. So yeah. Anyway, you guys should let us know your thoughts on this and how what you thought because yeah, it was it was overall, a whirlwind of emotion. Overall, I did like it. Like I really like the first half of the book before he wakes up. I could not stop reading the friggin' book. Yeah. And even right after he woke up, I couldn't stop reading it. No. Like I really, really did enjoy most of the book. <laughs> I enjoyed all of it. I, I, but I'm used to these romances where they do jerk you around, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't surprised, and I knew where they were going and why they did it. I just thought it was super. It felt rushed from how yeah. long they took to re write the first part. It just seemed like this was jammed into a tiny bit, and I was like, but, but, but you needed more. We needed mm -hmm. like a little bit more. Yeah. I think it would have understood if it, like, happened, like, if the accident and stuff happened a while later, not just right after. Yes. You know what I mean? I think then... he was barely out of the hospital. Yeah, I think then it would have made a little bit more sense and you wouldn't have been as angry if it was like, okay, they've, this, this is whatever, and she's still struggling. Yeah. And then this is what happens, and then she comes out of it. Maybe, like, she doesn't, like, go into a coma, too, but maybe her accident makes her realize, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I don't know. So there's, so I, I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I liked most of it. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we better get going. We've got more tea to drink and books to read. I don't know if I said that last time. I either. don't think you did. I guess we were like, guys. we have two minutes to say the ending. Yeah, we do this a lot. We're like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> um, all of our social medias are down below. Um, make sure to rate and review the podcast and subscribe. Subscribe, please. And please Push review. Push the little dingy notification on YouTube. Nope. The bell. Uh, to get notified of when we post new videos. And if you don't, you'll get snails in your bed <laughs> or whatever. Remember you were like Crickets threatening in your walls. Henry, <laughs> Henry will come to your house. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're losing it. Yep. Um, I don't know. So come check us out on Patreon if you want to hear very weird um, uh, talks about uh, <laughs> anything and everything. Yeah, I'm everything trying to think of like, like not R rated. You know what I mean? But like, like. It's more personal, less filtered. Um, no, but for real. Yeah, yeah. It is more more personal, and occasionally we have uh, an adult beverage. Yes, so. and we read from Reddit, and we read bad reviews, and we just do silly things over there that don't really fit in the podcast format that we've put here. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.